We have just learned Chistov's algorithm for computing matrix determinants, as well as all the other coefficients of matrix characteristic polynomial in polylogarithmic time. So what for can we use the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial besides just ditching all of them and keeping the determinant? Well, for instance, we can find inverse matrices quickly. So due to Chistov's algorithm, we know these guys, all the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. And now we have a Cayley-Hamilton theorem that a matrix satisfies its characteristic equation. So if we plug in the matrix A into its own characteristic polynomial, we get an all-zero matrix. So that's a to the power of n minus s1, a to the power of n minus 1, and so on. So the term before the last one will be this, and the last term would be minus 1 to the power of n sn, and here we need to have a matrix, so we put identity matrix, so this should sum up to an all-zero matrix. And now out of this, we can express the identity matrix as sn inverse times sum for i from 0 to n minus 1, minus 1 to the power of i, s n minus 1 minus i, times a to the power of i plus 1. And now we can multiply both sides of this equation by inverse of a, getting inverse of a on the left-hand side and different power of a on the right-hand side. So we see that in case, of course, when the matrix determinant is not zero and this guy exists, we are able to compute the inverse matrix as soon as we already computed these guys and we are able to compute all the powers of A efficiently, which we know can be done pretty fast on a parallel computer. And the summation can also be done in a binary tree scheme in polylogarithmic time. So we now know how to compute inverse matrices in polylogarithmic time as well, on a parallel computer. So we see that our ability to do some matrix operation fast, like computing determinant or characteristic polynomial, implies that we are able to compute, say, inverse matrices fast. And if we are able to compute inverse matrices fast, we are able to solve systems of linear equations fast. And actually, it turns out that for a standard RAM model with a single processor, this happens to be the same. So if we are able to solve some problem for matrices fast, like multiplying matrices or computing inverses, then we are able to solve many other problems related to matrices as fast. So currently, we do not yet know the exact value of matrix multiplication exponent. But it turns out that whatever operation with matrices or out of a standard list can be done efficiently, all the other operations can be done with practically the same complexity. And we'll now get into this investigation for a single processor RAM model. Recall that in a standard RAM model, we know that we have a constant omega, so that matrix multiplication can be done in time big O of n to the power of omega plus little o of 1. And this omega is called the matrix multiplication exponent. So we can show that actually you do not need necessarily to improve matrix multiplication algorithms to get some knowledge about this omega. With the same result, you can improve, for instance, algorithms for computing inverse matrices. So suppose that inversion for any n by n matrix C can be done in time big O of n to the power of beta plus little o of 1, where beta is some constant. And suppose that A and B are any n by n matrices. Then let's take a matrix which consists of blocks, and these blocks look like this. So all these blocks are of size n by n, and here we have all zero blocks, here we have three identity matrices of order n, here we have a, b, and 0. And now let's take this matrix as c. Well, this is a 3n by 3n matrix, but if we are able to invert matrices of order n in this time, changing c to 3n by 3n matrix does not really change the asymptotic behavior of this function. And let's now observe that C inverse actually is equal to a block matrix where the blocks 
look as follows. Here we have all zeros, here we have all ones that are identity matrices, and here we have minus A and minus B, and we have a product of A and B in the top right corner. And indeed, we can check that C times C inverse is indeed an identity matrix. And when we're dealing with these kind of block matrices, we can do it by multiplying blocks. So C times C inverse is a matrix which is decomposable into blocks. And for instance, here we would have identity times identity plus A times zero plus zero times zero. So we have identity here. Here we would have identity times minus a plus a times identity plus zero times zero. And this gives us an all zero matrix. Here we would have identity times a b plus a times minus b plus zero times identity. And this would give us all zero block as well and so on and so forth. So we can eventually see that we'll get a matrix which looks like this, which is exactly an identity matrix. And so now, after this check is actually accomplished, we can see that we have immediately an algorithm for computing product of two matrices. So we take matrices A and B, we form this matrix of order 3n, then we employ the algorithm for inversion of these kind of matrices, and then we just look at the top right corner of this inverted matrix, and we see the product of A and B. So our ability to invert in time B go n to the power beta plus little of one implies our ability to multiply matrices in the same time. And any improvement of the exponent here would immediately imply the improvement of exponent here. Now what about the other implication? Do we have it? Well, it turns out that we do. So if we're able to multiply matrices quickly, we're able to compute inverse on a single processor. We're able to compute the determinant on a single processor in the same asymptotic time complexity. And we'll next get on to the proof of this fact.